Hey, it's Zach from 718 Motor Pool, and today we're going to be talking about the Federal Signal Twin Sonic. If you've ever seen any movie or TV show set in the 70s or early 80s, you've definitely seen one of these boxy light bars. Being in so many TV shows and movies for decades, this light bar has become subtly ingrained in our culture. I guarantee you, if you think of a police car, fire truck, or ambulance from the 70s, it's going to have a Twin Sonic on it. Even as far as the 1990s, departments were reusing these bars on modern cars. In 1995, during the infamous tank rampage in San Diego, you could still see Twin Sonics mounted on the Aero Crown Vicks that were chasing the tank. So what made the Twin Sonic so special, it was the first modern light bar, and what made the Twin Sonic so innovative was this light bar was the first fully enclosed light bar. It also used mirrors to project more light. Prior to this, emergency vehicle lighting was typically a single beacon or multiple lights on a crossbar, making the Twin Sonic cutting-edge technology for its time, and it would fuel decades of innovation and competition amongst emergency lighting manufacturers. When the Twin Sonic Model 12 was first introduced at the 1968 International Association of Fire Chiefs Convention in Louisville, Kentucky, it was an overnight success. People had never seen anything like it, and they loved it. Orders started coming in, and the Twin Sonic was flying off the shelves, selling about 400 units in the first year, which was double the amount of the other federal light bar on the market at the time. Granted, 400 units doesn't sound like a lot, but considering until 1979, the Twin Sonic was entirely hand-assembled. The Model 12 had a three-step forward-facing mirror system, as you can see on this all-blue bar here. This design made for enhanced front warning, but left a lot to be desired to the rear, which would be addressed in future models. In 1970, a new model of Twin Sonic was introduced. The Model 12X was an improvement to the original Model 12 and called for the mirrors to be cut in half and the top half rotated and placed in an X pattern. Doing this gave the rear just as much warning power as the front. This eliminated a lot of dead space as well. The Model 12X was the most popular model sold. This one has red and amber domes, which was a very popular color combination in Arizona in the 70s and up until about 1983, when a lot of agencies started replacing amber with blue. The next model of Twin Sonic to be introduced was the Model 12F. The first generation of 12F eliminated the mirrors entirely and added inboard PAR 36 flashers. By 1972, the second generation replaced the first generation. This added the lower mirrors back and added flashers on top of them. The flashers had Fresnel lenses made from cut-down Dietz lenses to better diffuse the light, as it was coming from a much smaller unit. The first generation of 12Fs are pretty rare. I don't believe many were made, and even fewer survived. I've personally never seen one myself. But the original 12F design would make a return for 1974. In 1974, Federal introduced the Economy Series. The Economy Series, or E-Series, was a stripped-down version of the Twin Sonic taking it to its most basic form, with no mirrors on the Model 12E. The Model 12EV was a slight improvement with small V-shaped mirrors. However, the most common one of the Economy line was a 12EF, which is shown here. The EF was essentially a rehashing of the first-generation Model 12F. The Economy line also deleted the stainless steel trim and stainless steel speaker grille with aluminum. This cut down on production costs as well as gave the Economy series a distinct look. Now, the E-Series was primarily marketed towards the tow truck market, but the NYPD and Illinois State Police also used these. This bar is set up to NYPD Highway Patrol spec for 1979. That would be the only year that they bought full-size Twin Sonics in large numbers. For 1980, they would use a medium-sized version of the same bar for the remainder of the fleet. Over the production run of the Twin Sonic, there were several different models spun off, like the midsize and small model, which were developed to accommodate passenger cars becoming smaller due to the gas crunch of the 1970s. In 1973, the California Twin Sonic, or the CTS, was introduced to accommodate specific requirements for California regarding emergency vehicle lighting. A steady burn front-facing light, as well as a flashing rear light, was added to the inboard driver's side area. An amber cutout was made to the rear of the dome to satisfy the need for a steady burning red light and a flashing rear light. From 1979 until 1981, there was a special production run of green domes due to a trend of changing vehicle traffic laws, which required private security vehicles to use green or amber or a combination of both. There were only about 200 green domes produced for the security company Securitas, and only about 10 of them are known to exist today. Peak production of the Twin Sonic was from 1976 until around 1980. Production would end in August of 1984, and the last one sold was to the Pierce Manufacturing Company for a fire truck destined for South Dakota. 
Despite how innovative and effective the Twinsonic was, it was rapidly surpassed by newer and better technology. One of the biggest drawbacks to the Twinsonic was its shape. Due to the boxy shape of the light bar, it could reduce the top speed of an emergency vehicle by up to 10 miles an hour. However, despite it being out of production for 40 years, there are a handful still in service today.